Act Four of Alexander the Great by Jean Racine, translated by Robert Bruce Boswell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four, Scene One, Exiana. Am I to hear these shouts of victory for ever ringing glory to my foes reproach to me? And may I not at least hold solitary converse with my woes? incessantly pursued by one i hate i care not for my life try what they may to make me love it while close watch they keep but porous ne'er believe i can be stopped from following thee doubtless thy heart refused to outlive thy star vain all their armed pursuit thine efforts would thy presence have betrayed so they must look for thee amongst the dead alas and thou didst leave me and thy love flooded thine heart these ills that crush me now seem then foreseen when into mine thine eyes gazed fondly and besought to know thy place within my heart a failure on the field thou didst not wreck twas love that caused thy fear why did i hide with many a subterfuge a secret which to know not vexed thy peace How oft thine eyes making resistance weak almost compelled my silence to give way how oft responsive to thy strong desire e'en in thy presence heartfelt sighs escaped but still i sought to doubt thy victory as glory's incense to myself explained those sighs and fancied that naught else i loved forgive to-day i feel i loved but thee as many a time before, I own it now, glory possessed my soul, but I refrain from telling, as I ought, that it was thou didst fix my homage. Her I learned to know through seeing thee, and, ardent as I was, seen in another, should have loved her less. But, ah, what boots it to vent useless sighs, thou canst no longer hear, lost in the void! tis time my soul descending to the tomb should pledge the love for which thou long didst yearn in vain and as a seal of faithfulness show that this heart cannot survive its loss canst thou suppose that i could wish to live the conqueror's captive to whose will thy death delivers us i know he means to come to speak to me and giving back my throne thinks to console me thinks my hatred quelled may serve for trophy of his clemency. Ay, let him come, and he shall see me die a monarch to the last worthy of thee. Scene 2. Alexander Exiana Well, sire, and do you find some secret joy in seeing tears your arms have forced to flow? Or is it that you grudge me in my full freedom to weep alone with misery? your grief shall be as free as it is just madam you mourn a prince magnanimous i was his foe but need not therefore blame the tears devoted to the hero's death ere to her borders india saw me come his brilliant virtues made him known to me conspicuous among earth's greatest kings i knew why came you then with fierce attack what led you from the world's remotest bounds in search of virtue to make war thereon can signal merit burst upon your sight and only move your pride to persecute yes i sought porus but whate'er be said i did not seek in order to destroy i own that burning with ambitious fire i was attracted hither by his fame and but to hear he was invincible made my heart eager for fresh enterprise whilst i was dreaming that on me alone for many a gallant fight all eyes were set i saw the valour of this warrior spread till fame between us held her balance poised when from his arm increasing terrors flew, India to me seemed to present a field deserving my best efforts, for I tired of kings, 
too feeble to resist, and heard with joy of such a brave and gallant foe to whet my courage. So I came to seek glory and danger. Far did he surpass all I had heard, and victory before so constant almost left my side to join your ranks. The least success was hardly won, and Porus, when he lost a battle, saw his glory grow yet greater in defeat. A fall so noble but exalts his fame, not to have fought would vex his spirit more. Alas! but he in patriotic zeal felt bound to cast away all care for life for harassed and betrayed on every side headlong he charged a multitude of foes but were it true his warlike ardour fired your soul and showed an open path to fame why with unworthy weapons did you fight were you obliged with cunning to oppose courage to wait upon another's will for his defeat and mar your fair renown triumph but be assured that in his heart already taxiles disputes with you the conqueror's glorious name and with some show of justice but for him the traitor boasts you would have won no bays this soothes my smart to see your glory shared by such as he your passion vainly strives to smirch my fame I ne'er was known to steal a victory, and none can say that I subdue my foes not with the sword, but guile and stratagem, the coward's arts. Outnumbered everywhere, yet never have I deigned to hide myself, or owe my triumph to an ambuscade. But in the light of day I fight and win." With genuine grief I mourn your country's fate. I would have spared your princes a defeat. Had they but followed my advice and wish, I would have saved them, or have fought them both. Believe me. Yes, you are invincible. Is it not enough that all is in your power? Why must you cast so many kings in chains? make with impunity the whole world groan. What had so many captured cities done? Why is Hithersbees cumbered with our dead? What have I done to cause the overthrow of him who could alone attract my eye? Did he invade your borders, deluge Greece with blood? What nations have been roused by us to rage and opposition against you? Your glory we admired, we grudged it not. Charmed with each other, with our thrones content, we looked to find a happier lot than yours. The only conquest Porus wished to win was o'er a heart that might have owned him lord this day. Were his the only blood you shed, that crime your only title to reproach, would it not mar your happiness to feel you came so far to snap so fair a tie between our hearts? Nay, flatter not your soul. You are a tyrant, nothing else. I see your purpose, madam, to provoke my wrath to rise against you with outrageous taunts. You hope, perchance, my kindness tried too far, may violate its former character. But if your virtue could exert no spell, the conqueror is disarmed to your attack. Compassion moves me, e'en against your will, and I respect you in your deep distress. It is this trouble that distorts your sight, so that a hateful tyrant I appear. Else would you own the glory of my arms has not been always stained with blood and tears, and you would see— Can I help seeing them, those virtues which embitter my despair? Have I not seen your triumphs everywhere free from the insolence that stings the brave? Scythians and Persians see I not well pleased to bear your yoke, 
and vaunt your clemency eager to guard your person and supplant your people in a charge so coveted but what does it avail the heart you wound everywhere else to hear your goodness praised can you expect my hatred to be soothed because the hand that tortures me is kissed by others can the kings that you have helped nations content to serve you give me back porous no sire my hatred is increased by others love e'en though myself compelled to admiration earth's united voice shall not dictate to me though none be found to share my hatred i excuse the wrath that springs from love yet well may be surprised if common rumour has reported right porus no special favour won from you wavering in choice tween taxiles and him whilst he yet lived your heart refused to speak but when he can no longer hear your voice now for the first time you declare for him think you that conscious of your new-born flame e'en in the tomb he claims it for himself load not yourself with unavailing grief cares more important summon you elsewhere sufficient tribute to his memory your tears have paid rain with fresh lustre shine and to your stricken heart restoring peace strengthen your realms sore shaken by his fall choose them a master from so many kings deeper in love than ever texiles the traitor prithee take a milder tone he bears no stain of treason against you lord of his own dominions he resolved to shield them from the thunderbolt of war no oath no duty bound him to leap down into the gulf where porus chose to plunge think it is alexander he himself that cares to advance your lover's happiness think how united by so just a choice indus shall with hydaspus own your sway all shall be easy when your interests are my concern and closely joined with those of taxiles he comes i do not wish my presence to embarrass him his voice will best explain what uttered by my lips seems to offend lovers like solitude i'll not disturb it scene three axiana Texilis. mighty king drew near great monarch of the indus you have had your praise sung here and i have been rebuked for anger against one who it is said would please me if he could whose love is warmed by my cold treatment i am urged forsooth to love you in return know you the task which i would set you how to touch my heart and are you ready madam only prove what power so sweet a hope has over my heart what must i do he who would win my love must be in love with glory as am i interpret vows into fine feats of arms and hate as i do alexander's name into the midst of terrors he must march fearless must fight and conquer or be slain compare yourself with porus and decide which of the two is worthier of me yes sir my heart that seemed to be in doubt knew well the difference between a king and a base slave i loved him and i love since jealous fate forbids him to enjoy the sweet confession i have chosen you as witness ever shall my tears revive his memory and you shall see me place my only pleasure left in telling you of him in vain my ardour seeks to warm a soul as cold as ice Porus has set his deathless image there. Should I confront grim death to please you, I should please you not, unless I perished, nor can. My esteem may be regained. Wash out in foeman's blood your crime. Lo, fortune smiles. 
the hero's shade gathers his scattered troops beneath his flag and seems the only power that can arrest their flight yours too ashamed of your commands wear on their brows wrath and repentance writs for all to read add fuel to the fire which now consumes them and to us restore our freedom that begins to breathe again be the defender of your throne and mine and let not porous weight find an heir you answer nothing by your face i see you lack the courage for so grand a scheme the example of a hero calls in vain you hug your chains leave me and live a slave this is too much madam do you forget that if you force me to it i may use the master's tone provoked by your contempt beyond endurance all you have is mine and since my homage but inflames your pride i shall be able yes i know it well i am your prisoner and you fain would make my wishes captive too till to your sighs my heart responds good cast away that mask of irksome mildness terrors be your aid speak with the tyrant's tongue ready to sting try all you can i cannot hate you more deal not i pray you in mere idle threats your sister comes to prompt you in your part farewell her counsels and my wishes tend to the same goal and you will help me soon to follow porus nay but rather scene four taxilis cleophila leave this thankless queen sworn to disturb your peace with deathless hate who makes of your despair her sole delight forget no in my heart her image is enshrined i worship her though all my sighs meet ceaseless enmity in spite of your persuasion her disdain against my will her must i ever love nor need her wrath surprise us you and i have given her cause enough ah but for you and your ill counsel which has been my curse i should be now if love not less abhorred i but for you defended by my care my love without a porous she might weigh in doubt and would not that be happiness to make her for a moment hesitate i can no longer live beneath her scorn i must fall humbly at her cruel feet or run with speed to execute her wrath though aimed at alexander or at you i know the ardour of your mutual flame but tis too much to sacrifice my peace for yours forget myself to give you joy nay all must perish may i but be blessed go then and to the battlefield return let not the flame die down that fires you now why lingers this inconstant courage here haste to the conflict porus waits for you is porus living has he then appeared yes his tremendous strokes too well attest this he what happened he foresaw his death being noised abroad held back the conqueror's arm too credulous he hither comes to wake their slumbering valour triumph premature to check and doubt it not with love and rage inflamed to seize his mistress or be slain before her eyes nay more seduced by her your camp breaks out in murmurs well prepared to follow porus oh like a generous swain succour your rival loved so tenderly farewell scene five taxilis ha bent upon my ruin fate calls back my dangerous rival from the grave again shall he beheld those eyes whose tears mourned him and dead preferred him yet to me tis more than i can bear let me but see what fortune offers and with whom shall rest the glorious prize nor will i idly watch the issues from afar in feeble wrath End of Act 4